drunk. I just had the worst dream ever. The calf would knock me out. Calf would. As if. Bit of a wake up call for Anthony Mundine. You better believe it, Chock. You did get knocked out by Garth Wood. <laughs> We're going to find out if it's going to happen again. Paul Up and welcome to you. Uh, does lightning strike twice? Well, it may well do. Uh, it's one of the great questions now. Um, Anthony Mundine hasn't been under this sort of pressure for a very long time, and there is a lot of pressure because another loss to Garth Wood, and basically that's the end of Anthony Mundine's career, for, certainly on an international level. He may fight on, but he needs to win this fight. Uh, it was such a shock. Not many people gave Garth Wood a, a chance to win. He, He's technically not a great fighter, but he's just got this opportunistic uh, streak in him to take an opportunity and make the most of it. And he was the one who knocked out the man. What do you think uh, will be the differences in terms of Mundine's preparation? I mean, all the in the lead up to the first fight, he was talking about how he found it hard to get up and was almost disrespectful towards the Wood camp. Do you think he's changed tack now? Oh, look, certainly. He, he knows how important it is. Look, to be fair to Anthony, it, on paper, it wasn't much of a challenge. Um, you know, Garth was a novice. He wasn't even in the contender tournament on Fox 8 until two days before he came in when Shannon Taylor was injured. He, he, he won that tournament. He upset a couple of uh, more highly ranked fighters. And uh, Anthony Mundine, look, I think one of the key points for Garth Wood in going into this fight was that because he knew Anthony Mundine, the person, he wasn't intimidated by the man persona. And I think that went a long way into helping Garth win the fight. Well, gee, it's a massive uh, time for Australian boxing, beginning with that next Wednesday. The rematch, Mundine Wood, a couple of former rugby league players going at it. Make sure you check out that. We've got another big Australian in action too. We're going to talk about Danny Green now uh, coming up. Uh, when's that fight? Uh, that's in July, July 20th at the Sydney Entertainment Centre. That's going to be, uh, well, people are going to say it's easy because Antonio Tarver's is 42, but he hasn't lost it totally, has he? Look, Tony Tarb has been a very good world champion. We've seen him in a number of big fights. We saw him in the Rocky Balboa movie, starring as the heavyweight champion of the world. He certainly can still fight. I think this is a good this is a good matchup for Danny Green. Danny's coming off that injury where he had that abscess taken out of his uh, his stomach. So, uh, one thing about Danny, he never leaves anything in the gym. You know, he's going to be 100 percent fit. He'll lift for this fight. He wants to have an Antonio Tarver win uh, on his resume. And obviously, for both guys at the age, you know, we forget. Uh, Danny Green's 37. He's not young either. So for Tarver, 42. The loser, maybe it's the end of their career. So it's a very important fight. It's going to be here at the Sydney Entertainment Centre and it's going to get a lot of international coverage. We just saw Tarver there fighting Roy Jones Jr. He won a couple of fights again he, against him at his uh, peak, which just shows what type of fighter he was. How close do you think Antonio Tarver will be to his very best? He's certainly going to be much tougher than Roy Jones Jr. was. Uh, Roy certainly was a long way past his best, and Tavia will, will, Antonio will have a lot left. You know, particularly with Roy losing down, he'll be very cautious coming to Australia. There was all these accusations about hand wraps and training and all these problems for Roy. So uh, I think Tavia will be certainly focused, and this is not an easy win for Danny Green. Uh, he's a big man, Tavia. He, he's a big guy. He's going to have a, a significant uh, height advantage over Danny, and we saw Danny do well in his last fight against B.J. Flores. But look. Tarver's a, a, a proud champion. He's not coming here to lose. He wants to win the IBO Cruiserweight World Champion. I think it's going to be a good fight. Did you, what did you think of Shane Cameron, the Kiwi, having a crack at Green for taking on Tarver instead of uh, him? Well, look, Shane's been pursuing Danny for a long time now. He's come down for heavyweight ca to campaign at Cruiserweight for this match. But, you know, to me, if you're Danny Green, would you rather fight Antonio Tarver, you know, the magic man, and beat him? and have that on your resume, or, or, or Shane Cameron. I, I, to me, I think Danny Green wants a little bit of history. Beat Roy Jones Jr. Now I want to beat Antonio Tarver. And Green spoke about how he's almost had to take a bit of a pay cut to get Tarver out here. Explain how that works. Well, obviously, Danny's the promoter of the fight, and uh, you know, there's no guaranteed money. The promoter always takes a risk. He has to guarantee Antonio Tarver a certain amount. And like Roy Jones Jr., they're not cheap to bring him to Australia. What, what would he be... Paying him, do you think? A oh, like at least a million dollars. At least mm. a million. You'd think so. You know, Tarver's not going to come all the way to Australia for mm. for a hundred thousand dollars. It's, it's, it's good money. Rounds. But obviously, you know, they sell the fight around the world. Depending how successful the fight is, Danny could do just as well. But as a promoter, you're the one who's taking the risk. That's chicken feed compared to what Manny Pacquiao will get to fight Shane Mosley in their welterweight world title.
That's uh, on May the 8th. Uh, Mosley said, I'm going to shock the world, but it would be one of the biggest shocks in the world's boxing's history, wouldn't it? Well, Manny Pacquiao, pound for pound number one, greatest fighter in the, in the world today. Shane Mosley used to held that, that ranking. We saw him in this studio a couple of years ago, and Shane, after coming off that great win over Antonio Margarito, look, in boxing, anybody can win on the night. Shane certainly got the talent, he's got the experience, he's got the knockout punch. Uh, I think it's a good fight for Manny Pacquiao uh, to show once again that he is number one in the world. But hey, you know, Shane's not certainly going to be uh, run over like a truck. Like you say, Sugar Shane Mosley, an absolute champion of the sport. If he and his team were sitting down trying to find a single weakness, a way to break through Pacquiao's defence, what would it be? I think the, the, the weakness is focus. Manny Pacquiao's got so many things going on. He's an elected congressman now in the Philippines. He's got so many things happening away from boxing. If Shane can fully concentrate on the fight, maybe there's a little weakness, a little advantage there. But in the ring, maybe the hand speed. I think Shane Mosley's still got the hand speed that could trouble Manny Pacquiao. Now, there is uh, the, detail, the details of Pacquiao Mosley. That's happening because Pacquiao Mayweather Jr. fight isn't happening. I just wanted to ask you about Floyd Mayweather, something interesting that's happened on Twitter. Floyd's been uh, showing off his winning bets and... Uh, We've actually got one to show you. It's quite amazing the sort of money he's having. He had $325,000 on, uh, on the bout the other day. Gamboa to win in under 10 rounds. He had 325 on to win 232. Now, he's winning a lot of money, but the US government are asking a few questions. He owes them about $3.5 million in taxes. Look, I think there's no doubt Floyd Mayweather's going to come back and fight. He's got some legal issues he's trying to clean up. We all want to see him against uh, Manny Pacquiao. That is the fight of the year if it can happen in November. Fingers crossed it will. But, uh, you know, Floyd, he's, he's money Mayweather. That's what he's called. He likes to throw money around. And some people have said to me, the money he throws around, he's going to have to keep fighting to pay off those debts. That's right. Yeah, I, I saw a show a little while ago, you know, taking, taking viewers around his house. And he certainly lives a lavish lifestyle. How close do you think we are to that November fight actually happening? Mike Tyson, who made $400 million, ended up $100 million in debt. Yeah. So, you know, if he can blow that money, so can Floyd Mayweather. Floyd will be back to fight, and I think if Manny Pacquiao can beat Mosley, it is the must-see fight of the year. All right, just before we go, we'll briefly mention Michael Katsidis, the Aussie uh, in action. He's up against Robert Guerrero, too, so that's a big one for the Australian. Well, well, on pound for pound, one of Australia's most exciting fighters ever. Don't miss Michael Katsidis this weekend. Yep, should be a cracking fight. Paul, thanks for joining us. Pleasure, great to be here. All right, stay with us.